Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, on this day of Ramadan, we are gathered today really to talk about something that in my mind has been there since I began my undergraduate studies. Why didn't Muslims think about a continuous charity before today, right? That's what my, my, my mind was always thinking, like, subhanAllah, like what an amazing, amazing organization to think, hey, why is it that we know students cannot afford the uh, education and yet they're going into debt and yet we're not doing anything about it. And we know our religion says don't, you know, actually uh, uh, incur uh, a debt, especially the, the, the heavy thousands and thousands that Sister Yasmin and others have mentioned. So today, inshallah, my focus is going to be on the benefits of uh, everlasting benefits of seeking knowledge. Right. And in some ways, it's interesting because I, you know, I, I did my bachelor's, I did my master's. And then I worked for a couple of years and I came to do my PhD and it seemed like I was just never going to stop studying. And that's true in the conventional sense, in the sense that there was some degree, right? There's some, if you uh, look behind me, my kids' lives right here, like some trophies that are being, you know, in the form of certificates, some degrees that are there. But the actual degrees that we need to care about in connection to knowledge are the darajat that we know in our theological tradition are the degrees and the ranks with which we rise to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's really the, the, the crux of all of what we're doing. But it doesn't mean that while doing that, we have to go into debt, right? And so we really need to think about this very seriously. What is, what is it that you and I can do, right, to allow for the youth in especially the United, these United States to be able to say, I dream of becoming whatever it is that Allah blessed me with the potential to become. And I will work hard. I will study hard. But can you help me not to be in debt? What a noble goal. What a noble goal. And the seeking of knowledge is not only an integral part of our faith, but subhanAllah, the real miracle of all of this is that the person, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, and it makes me, gives me pause, subhanAllah, to think about this, and, and I get emotional. The miracle of the Qur'an, the miracle of the Qur'an, among the many miracles, is that it was revealed to a person who neither knew how to read nor write. We say pre-literate. Neither knew how to read nor write. But the love that he had for knowledge, the love that he had for specialization, the love that he had for to encourage uh, all of the young people, all of the ibadullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Omar, uh, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, all of the young people around him, constantly, constantly being encouraged to learn, imagine what that created. It created a society that even after he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that these were the people who were the beacons of light. These were the people who said, and I mean, who, who took, took on the burden, if you will, of transmitting the religion to the coming generations. So tonight, Today, when you think about giving to support a continuous charity, you are literally, literally acknowledging the, bene the blessings that Allah has bestowed you with. And then you are saying that even though I went through hardship and Sister Yasmin described it and others will describe it because we came out of a generation of people where the, the community was still working on putting, it's still working on putting together what it means to go from cradle to grave as a Muslim in America and what all the support that we need. So when you give today to a continuous charity, you are saying that not only am I grateful to Allah for the blessings that he gave me, I am donating to a 501c3 charitable organization, so you have the tax deduction, that I'm uh, giving to an organization that is zakah eligible. And yet, subhanAllah, I'm giving gratitude because whatever livelihood I have, whatever career that I established, 
whatever I did was written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rizq has been written when we were in the wombs of our mothers. Of course, the mothers made dua, right? Like what immigrant mother didn't make dua for their children to be a doctor, subhanAllah, right? Uh, my, uh, I'm a, I have a PhD in social work. I remember my son, who is the son of immigrants, like my wife is from Egypt, uh, Egyptian American. I am a, a, a South Asian, Indian American, Hyderabadi, to those who are watching and will get a kick out of that, right? Imagine that if you think about the way things were worked out, right? The way things worked out, my son is being socialized in largely these circles. So one of his friends, when he was very young, asked him, hey, what kind of a doctor is your father? <laughs> And my son looked at him, and my son is telling me this, that this happened. And I said, well, what did you tell him when he asked you what kind of a doctor was your father? I, I, he said, I, I looked at him and I said, the kind that doesn't help people. <laughs> so a PhD, right, in his mind was, was not a medical doctor, because medical doctors apparently help people. I'm like, I'm in social work. It's about people. Ya Allah. Anyway, so the point is every mother, right, every immigrant mother, wants their children to be a doctor of something. What we're saying is, today when you donate to a continuous charity, you are saying, and I love the website. Go to the website. If you haven't yet been to the website, visit the website when it's broken down by credit hour, when it's broken down by the way you can interrupt the, the cycle of debt, and you can choose at what level you can afford to do it, right? And you see that you can text give ACC uh, to 44-231, 44-321, right? You can you can actually interrupt that cycle of debt. So, what are some of the benefits of everlasting seeking everlasting? I mean, everlasting benefits of seeking knowledge. You know, in this is Ramadan. The Battle of Badr is going to be talked about in another few days, right? The seventeenth of Ramadan. The Muslims, of course, Alhamdulillah, were victorious in the end. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, among the du'as that he made that day where that, oh Allah, if this small band of people, this small group of people who loves Allah, who loves the Messenger, if they are destroyed today, there will be no one to worship you. What a, you know, a dire straits to be in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory. In the process of the victory, the Quraysh, many among the Quraysh became prisoners of war. Let's talk about it. the benefits of knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who could not read or write looked to the prisoners, mostly the Meccans and he knew among the Ansar in Medina were people who did not also know how to read and write. He said to the prisoners of war, you could have your freedom if you teach those among our community to read and write you could have your freedom by using your specialization, your skill set to improve the lives of others by teaching them, by liberating their minds, if you will, by teaching them how to read and write, subhanAllah. What is it that we would be waiting for? The month of taqwa is among us. We, it's right here. It's here now. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ that, that you may achieve heightened state of God consciousness. Well, the heightened state should tell us that we are literally having people in the Muslim community either stopping seeking knowledge because of the fear of the debt or having no choice but to go into debt to be able to establish you know, some form of livelihood to take care of themselves or their you know, elderly parents or whatever other responsibilities they have. This is not something taken lightly. So if you are listening today and you think, you know, subhanAllah, if I can, if I can give $3 a day, put aside $3 a day to help somebody else to escape debt or come out of debt or to be relieved of debt, ACC has all those different programs, then $3 a day is a $1,000 donation. If you text give ACC, 44-321, 44-321, that thousand dollars, subhanAllah, in that heightened state of consciousness, the month of taqwa, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it seems so long ago that we started reading Surah Al-Baqarah for the Taraweeh prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
what is the Quran? It is a book in which the, the in which there is about which there is no doubt. What is it? Hudan lil muttaqin. Who are the muttaqin? Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna as-salah. And then wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun. Those are the ones who have taqwa, who are muttaqin, in whom taqwa is complete, is achieved. They believe in the unseen. We definitely do. We're in four, we're in uh, 2021, over 153 years, approximately after the hijra. We are believing in the unseen. We have never met the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Oh Allah, grant us the company of your beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam through our good deeds this month. We believe in the unseen. We're establishing the daily prayers. We're establishing Taraweeh prayers at home sometimes because of the lockdown and, and all of the other pandemic you know, related restrictions. But then Allah SWT is saying, who else are the muttaqeen? The money you have is not your money. The money I have is not my money. It has been blessed, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? So that we may spend from that which he blessed us with. We may spend from that which he blessed us with. And that seeking of knowledge, subhanAllah, have met young people. And some of them have gone on. You know, I, I feel like the uncle category now. They did hivs. Then they went to, you know, got their bachelor's degree. Then they went to medical school. And now some of them are renowned doctors in their field. Not, in, you know, like a little Muslim ghetto. No, no, no. They're in America serving the larger population as 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 hafid of the Quran, as medical doctors, as lawyers, as social workers, as teachers. The, the the benefits of seek you know seeking knowledge is not just constrained to this narrow sense of oh I'm doing it to serve my Muslim community. Yes, please serve the Muslim community, but you should be thinking about humanity. Means that he alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa is saying he was sent. He, he, you know, we sent you not as a, as a negation to say we would not have sent you. We sent you not, except that you came as a mercy to all of creation. So go and get that career. Go and get that, you know, that go and choose that major that will help you to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serve humanity. And those of us who are watching. We have your back. Exert effort. Work hard. We're not going to take mediocrity. No. A continuous charity is not about funding mediocrity. Absolutely not. No. If you're going to be mediocre, definitely don't go into debt, but don't burden us with your debt if you intend not to put in the hard work. Right? If you if you intend not to put in the hard work. And the, the benefits are tremendous. One, self-improvement. If nothing else, if nothing else, we hope that you will find that you can reach and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better through whatever effort you exerted. And I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about the Islamic sciences. I'm talking about, you know, what we call secular, you know, all of the different subjects. I'm talking about excellence, ihsan, in everything we do. And if you can do that, if you put in the extra effort, if you put in the hard work, we are saying through a continuous charity, this organization, that we will develop scholarship programs. And I'm so happy, subhanAllah, to be uh, you know, a part of the, uh, the Yaqeen Institute and, and knowing that Yaqeen Institute is partnering with a continuous charity, right? In, 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 in one of our scholarship programs. So this isn't just hypothetical. This isn't abstract. Self-improvement is a direct benefit. Why? Because when you and I improve, in our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we understand what is on our shoulders. We understand that we cannot retreat into a cocoon. We have to actually blossom and go out there and say to Allah and to, you know, to the rest of humanity that I am here, O oh Allah, I am here to serve. Use me in whatever way possible. Brothers and sisters, think about your contribution today. Think about the fact that you're giving in the month of Ramadan. Think about the fact that we are already, we blink, subhanAllah, not only are we in the second Ramadan in, in approximately the continuation of the pandemic, but now we're already in the second third of Ramadan. And before you know it, we'll be talking about the last 10 nights. Before you know it, we'll be crying because Ramadan left us. 
a guest, a beautiful guest came and that guest left us. Do your share. Show that you care about debt. Show that you are, you know, moved that, that it can't be that people are, you know, are, are burdened with debt. Not in the path of seeking knowledge. Yeah, they could have made other, you know, somewhat foolish, if you will, you know, uh, choices in terms of property and, you know, whatever duniatic sort of things, but not for seeking knowledge. That we can't shackle people into a cycle of debt and, and, and potential poverty, right? And indebtedness for the rest of their lives because they chose to get more education. So let me start to wrap up. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and this is for the giving part of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ إِنَّ رَبِّي يَبْسُتُ رِزْقًا لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ مِنْ عِبَادِي That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually expands, say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands the rizq, the, the sustenance of whomever he wills, that he also constricts it. And then imagine talking about sustenance, imagine talking about expansion of sustenance and constriction of sustenance, and then immediately saying, that immediately talking about, but don't worry about all of that, just give, just spend, sacrifice. Show gratitude for the blessings Allah gave you. Show gratitude for the harm He prevented. If you went through the pandemic and Alhamdulillah were not affected either by COVID or any other form of you know financial impact, you are among a select few in the world. So Allah prevented harm from reaching you either financially or, or health-wise and so forth. So give to show gratitude for the harm Allah prevented from reaching you. Tech, go to your phone and text, give ACC 44-321 and say, here is my pledge. Here is my commitment. Here is what my family and I want to do to ensure that those who want to work hard, those who seek ihsan in their learning, those who understand that self-improvement is one aspect, that you know the ability to specialize and, you know, and acquire a skill set is another aspect. The ability to use that career to serve humanity is another aspect, and on and on and on in terms of the benefits of learning. The benefits of learning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that same verse in Surah Sabah, chapter 34, verse 39, Whatever it is you spend. Suppose today you say, man, everyone is asking me. There's like 10 events on a day and they keep asking me to give and give and give. If you can give one penny with sincerity. One penny with sincerity because the amount is not mentioned. He replaces whatever it is that you spend. It may not come dollar for dollar. So don't go asking for, well, I gave a thousand. I didn't see a thousand in my bank account. That's not how this works. It may come in another thousand dollars in, in, in your business that you didn't think about in somehow, you know, in some other way that you didn't think about. But it could also come in terms of improved relationships where you're suffering in, a, in, the, in the family. Improvement at your work, improvement in school, improvement in terms of health. It may come in any which way possible. Brothers and sisters, my time is up. My time is up. I want to respect the program, inshallah, and you have so many more other speakers coming up. Whatever you spend today, and two angels come, as Abu Huraira taught us from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. The angels keep making the dua, Allahumma ati munfiqan khalafa. Oh Allah, give to the person something in place of what they have spent today. Oh Allah, Give to a place of something in place of something of what they have spent today. Allahumma ati munfiq and khalafa. Just let me know in the chat if I have a few more minutes. If Edlin is not on, otherwise I'll stop here and jump. Right. So you need to think. I need to think. How can I make my contribution? Right. How can I relieve debt? And what an amazing and noble act, Subhanallah, that we may never meet the people. Right? We may never meet the people. Imran and Maryam, could you just let me know about the time, please? Right? We may never meet the people who are receiving the charity that we're giving to ACC. Right? 
imagine, but they will be sitting there, even though we've never met them. They will raise their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, whoever it was that donated, because it's a pool of money and it's going to be distributed to scholarships and you know and, and loans that they have to pay back and all of these things. If they raise their hand and say, Oh Allah, whoever donated, I'm asking you to bless them, to multiply their blessings, to replace what they have spent, to answer their dua. When that person, that student, makes that dua, the Prophet وسلم, told us that indeed the angels record their dua, that dua, and they listen to that dua of someone they never met, the person is never met, and the angels say, and for you, because you're making a dua for somebody who is absent, right, potentially never met, and the angels say, then for you, something similar to the dua you just made. So you get the reward of making the donation in the dunya terms, a tax deductible donation. In the akhirah terms, may Allah multiply your rewards. In the terms of dua, the person whose debt was relieved is saying, oh Allah, answer the dua of the person that, 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 that contributed so that I am relieved of this debt. Instead of a cycle of poverty, instead of a cycle of debt, we have a cycle of gratitude in a cycle of indebtedness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What an amazing, amazing opportunity. Brothers and sisters, I am so grateful to, for the, to the founders uh, of a continuous charity, to all of the staff, the volunteers, everybody, mashallah, who's working so hard. So I'm going to, inshallah, uh, wrap up here um, and, and remind you again, the reason we are all together today to support ACC all of the speakers you see, Sister Yasmin before me, Sister uh, uh, Hakima before me, all of what's going on, right? All of what's going on is because we understand that the difficulties that debt, you know, uh, brings into the lives of people. We would rather have, we would rather have people seek that knowledge, seek the benefits of that knowledge, see, you know, and 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 literally, literally, you know, strive to improve themselves their family, their community, and the world, and we would do our part to remove the cycle of poverty and debt and, 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 and debt and introduce a cycle of charity and gratitude and elevate the entire conversation. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.